We're in the middle of one of the most disruptive pandemics in human history. So it seems very timely to be talking about the supply chain of vaccines. Vaccines have been around for over 200 years, and there have been numerous examples of vaccines saving lives all over the world. One of the most dramatic examples of that was with smallpox that killed over 300 million people in the 20th century alone. Thanks to the great work of scientists, medical staff, manufacturers, distributors, smallpox was eradicated completely by 1979. So there's hope. So while we deal with the current pandemic, let's take a step back and unravel the complexities and nuances of the supply chain of vaccines. So let's first start by aligning on what is a vaccine. A vaccine is designed to fight off dangerous, sometimes deadly diseases. And the way it works is you present pathogens into a healthy human body in low doses so the immune system can develop antibodies to fight off the infection. Let's start with the first leg of the supply chain, which is the research required to develop these vaccines. These are typically long lead times. You know, typically a, a vaccine will take anywhere from five to 18 years to bring from research and concept to market. It requires a lot of appetite for experimentation and a lot of funding. To give you a sense, 94% of vaccine development efforts, they fail. There are over 35 companies and academic institutions that have dedicated research effort around developing vaccine for COVID-19 specifically. There are also multiple rounds of clinical tests as well as human trial tests that happen before the companies or the institutions can submit the vaccine for regulatory approval, which also take time, uh, to agencies like the US FDA. The next leg of the supply chain for vaccines is manufacturing. And it starts with ensuring that there's sufficient capacity allocated to manufacture the vaccine doses. To give you a sense, there are hundreds of agencies coordinating all around the world, preparing for manufacturing capacity for the COVID-19 vaccine as and when it gets approved. Another good example of this is the way manufacturing works for the vaccine of various strains of the flu. And there are over 100 different agencies in over 100 different countries that are continuously monitoring the propagation of the flu around the world. The vaccine typically takes about six months to manufacture and produce. Our processes could involve chicken eggs, animal cells, or synthetic technologies. The next leg of the supply chain is the allocation and distribution of the manufactured vaccines. The vaccine is a perishable product with a limited shelf life. Ideal temperatures are between two and eight degrees Celsius. There are many decisions to be made around packaging, around elements like single dose vaccines versus multi-dose vials. There are ancillary products like syringes and needles that have to be brought together. And all that has to be done in coordination with government agencies and healthcare service providers before they can get it to the patients who require these vaccines. In many rural parts of the world, that's a challenge, especially the last mile delivery problem. And more recently, there's been some very interesting work being done by companies like Zipline in using drone technologies to bring vaccines and other medical supplies to affected people in countries like Rwanda and Ghana and others. So a lot of coordination needs to happen in order to get the vaccines in the right quantities to the right places at the right time. While we're in the middle of this pandemic and the research continues to develop a vaccine for COVID-19, we should all believe in the scientific process and in the scientific community's abilities. We should also acknowledge the tremendous efforts the healthcare workers are making in working with patients that don't have the luxury of a vaccine for COVID-19. We as supply chain professionals can play an important role in saving the lives of people once the vaccine does get developed and approved. I'm confident that we as a human species will outsmart COVID-19.